Hello and welcome to the Rhythm Factory. I'm Eddie C, and together with my co-host Peter D, we're going to bring you in touch with people in and around the music business. This is the podcast that takes you up close and personal. Hi, my name is Eddie C, and welcome to the Rhythm Factory podcast. To my right, my co-host, Mr. Peter D. And today our special guest is Mr. Ray Clausen. Ray is a singer-songwriter living in the Netherlands, uh, basically singing in the Dutch language, mm -hmm. and at the moment starting to get very popular in the whole Benelux area. Uh, welcome to our show, Ray. Thanks, yeah. What what I'd like to know, you know, you're you're a singer songwriter, and uh, you're also working on a new CD, actually, together with Paul Nata. Who's a, yes, used yes. to be my neighbor, and a very good. He's a very good arranger. Wow. And uh, your your title of your CD is called uh, in Dutch uh, "Dicta by My Dicta by Yourself," mm -hmm. and, which is translated for our viewers, also for our viewers outside of the country. Uh, that uh, that don't speak Dutch. It's called uh, we we translate it to closer to yourself. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about your music and the person behind the music? Because that's something we would like yes. to know, and I'm sure our viewers and listeners as well would like to know. Yes, I can. Well, uh, <clears throat> I'm a sing songwriter. Yeah. Uh, I write songs, uh, as you said, in uh, in Dutch and in English. Okay. I'd like to write in English also because uh, it's a beautiful language. But it's a big challenge for me to write in Dutch because it's my own mother language. Yeah, yeah, I and understand, yeah. It's a challenge to write uh, beautiful Dutch songs uh, that reaches a lot of people in Holland and Belgium. So there's, there lays my passion, that's, that's my, where my passion is. Okay. And um, I'm now for, I think, well, I started as a, as a little boy, 11, with gu guitar playing uh, mm -hmm. lessons, and um, and then I grew up and I, I discovered I well, okay I can write songs. So I'm, I'm uh, I was uh, <coughs> in in, a, in in some bands and well for the the the. Um, um, there was one thought in my mind when I was a little boy when I heard the LP from Elvis Presley, Elvis Forever. Yeah. And that one thought and emotion and feeling was, I want to be famous. <laughs> 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 okay. And, and uh, of course, the, the, the dream uh, is, is still there, but well, you grow up eh, and you get a little bit more uh, Mature and yeah, you find out that that road, yeah. that road is not as smooth as a lot of people think it is when they get into the music business. No, so right. I met the music business, and when when did I met uh, meet uh, the music business? When when I uh, was um, performing at uh, the Voice, the the big uh, television show now uh, all over the world. Mm -hmm. I started in Holland, and yeah, well, I was I was a little bit. Um, he said, I woke up after the voice. Yeah, that will make yeah, we'll give you a wake up call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really woke up and I'm really glad that I woke up. Yeah. Because yeah, it's not only making music. It's all it's also to <clears throat> to find a balance between music and business. And uh, I, I, I almost hate the word business. But well, that's the worst part about the music business yes. is the business. Yes. Yeah. So the the title of the album, close to myself, in Dutch dichter by yourself, is is all about that. All okay. about the return to where I came from. Going back mm -hmm. to your basic roots. Yes. Getting yes. back to the basics. Yes. Good yes. to hear that. Yes. And of course, I'm not 16 or 20. I'm not. Uh, I'm now right now uh, 43. So it's another still, phase. Still young. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still young. Okay. And and uh, it almost uh, seems there's a new life has start for me. And and uh, I'm not in a hurry. It's not about the money. It's it's not about. It's about music. Yeah. And yeah. that's where the song, uh, uh, the album, uh, the theme of the album is close to myself and the songs. Uh, which are coming uh, are on that album uh, are all about that uh, subject. Because you get, you've got a single out now as yeah. well, right? So we yeah, it's up here. Talk about it uh, in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
but and, yeah yeah so so that's my my goal and uh, for for the coming uh, for coming years yeah? i want to yeah. i want to uh, get into the theaters and the festivals and i want to do everything what feels right what feels good to you good to you and yeah. follow my intuition it's it's it almost sounds a little bit corny or cheesy but hey well you know it is i know you uh i, I mean we play together yeah. uh, i can recall a gig that we did and you are really about the music uh, that's what I experienced because you, you know you didn't stop it that evening. You were you were going on and you know entertaining the whole yeah. crowd up there, yeah. uh, song after song, and you know the band was going like, all right, let's let's do this. Yeah. Uh, you know when Ray stops, we will stop. But taking know, taking a break is not in my dictionary. No. Almost. <laughs> so you know that's that's good to know, and uh, so it's good to hear that you, you know, are not in a hurry. Yeah, uh, and it's all about the music. Yeah, but you know, you uh, you tell us about how you meet or met up with uh, the music business. Mm -hmm. You also uh, worked for radio stations, uh, Q Music, Sky Radio. I believe yeah. you even had a show with Jeroen van Inkel at yes, Veronica I had. Radio. I had, yeah. Tell us a bit more about it and what was your work up there? Yeah, well, actually, I was a I was a designer on the uh, in the internet uh, department. Okay. And um, well, <coughs> it was a great job, but <laughs> uh, my colleagues were uh, they were looking for me. Wh where's Ray? Where's Ray? Well, I was I sneaked out uh, to the studios to yeah. uh, you uh, 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 to Jeroen van Eco and uh, and and I was uh, writing songs and jingles and I was singing with uh, in the studios uh, downstairs and well they were not amused, uh, but hey. Uh, there's a, a Dutch um, uh, gezegde in English. Yeah, Dutch saying. Yeah. Uh, blood creeps where you can't go. Blood creeps where it can't go. Or yeah. How do you say that, Eddie? Yeah. It, it, it blood crawls where it where it can't where it's usually not expected to be be seen. Yeah. 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 Thanks. <laughs> yeah. And. <coughs> Well, and you, get, you get you but there's there are a few all the scenes you can go into, but <laughs> I won't get too technical technical about that. <laughs> okay. <coughs> well, there's the, where it, it was the start of my uh, uh, you can say musical career on a more professional uh, okay uh, move um, uh, platform, and so I was uh, uh, I wrote a lot of jingles and uh, all my jingles were on uh, Radio Veronica and right. uh, Sky Radio. And after that, no, no, for, uh, let's let's re rewind. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jeroen van Enkel asked me to uh, to sing in his show. So he, he uh, yeah. uh, there was an item called uh, a wijsje voor een meisje, uh, a sound for a girl. Okay. Song for a girl, you can say that. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, okay, what I have to do then? Okay, you have to listen to uh, to the, the the man or the woman on the telephone who goes to the studio, yeah. and uh, do the intake. What's your, what's their story? What's their question? Yeah. And then I wrote about that story, and uh, I went, uh, it started uh, at six in the morning, of course, because the uh, the morning show was six to nine from yeah. North Winkle. Yeah. And then I wrote a song, I recorded it, and then live on radio with, uh, uh, with um, well, the subjects were, were different. The different subject. You had yeah. a subject that you had to write to. Yeah. So depending it's on what the subject matter was, that's how you wrote the song. That's, yes. That's what you want to say. Yes. Yeah. Wedding proposal or... Yeah. Uh, uh, it's yeah. kind of improvise, right? improvising, right? At the, at, the, at the spot or in the moment. Yes, improvising and also to make it personal yeah. because it's emotion radio. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was crying on live on air, and <laughs> and and, and, uh, and uh, not always crying, but also uh, nice moments. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was magic. Okay. Yeah. It was really magic, and I, I think I wrote a uh, uh, hundred songs in a year or something. Wow. And um, cool. and after that, uh, Jorn van Nickel uh, went to Q Music, and and so it ended ended for me. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, okay. I have to go to Q Music, right. so I uh, <laughs> I did my uh, uh, best and I and, uh, I wrote a, um, a letter and 
I came there. Uh, I, uh, I was a webmaster there, and I started as a webmaster. Okay. And the same thing happened. Uh, Veronica happened also at Q Music. Uh, I sneaked out. <laughs> the internet yeah, department, yeah, yeah. Right. and I went to the studios and <coughs> started started playing. Music. And it all yes, it all started right. again. And and after Q, uh, no, nah, well, I did a lot of uh, jingles for a lot of radio stations, jingle packages uh, like Three uh, FM, uh, Phoenix, uh, uh, all the all the big uh, stations in mm -hmm. Holland, but also in Spain, France, and okay. So it was uh, really uh, Does really it Pablo Espanol. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all I can say, too. <laughs> okay. uh, listen, uh, you know, besides composing your own music, and uh, I know you write songs for other people, and um, is there a different approach? Are you, do you, you tell us about those differences? Because I'm sure if you write for yourself, probably it's going to be different because it's closer to you. Or yeah. do you write for another person from out that same vision? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I write uh, I write a lot of songs for uh, different artists in mm -hmm. uh, Holland and Belgium, in Dutch and in English. Um, but the well, of course, the, there is a difference. The songs I write for myself are are um, it's, it's not a level. Or, uh, I, I, I write about. Um, yeah, well, you say that. Um, More personal things, maybe, or for yourself. It, well, it's not that I, I wouldn't give my best songs to someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But okay. um, that's not. But it depends on who is sitting here. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, when I do a co-write, uh, and and the, uh, and there's an artist who plays, who sings more uh, like party, mm -hmm. uh, more th to the. Not not there in the depth yeah. mm -hmm. of your emotion, but more uh, on the surface. The entertainment, more, more, more entertainment more. surface. I can write it also, but yeah. I have to think different. I mm -hmm. have to make a connection with you, okay. so I can understand. So you kind of you kinda, you, you kind of set yourself like a a, a a chameleon, so you can just go yeah. with the flow of the colors, yeah. as you yeah. would say, depending yeah. on the writer, uh, or depending on the also depending on the co the co writer as well. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's, uh, but in, in those yeah. songs, um, have you? Let me put like I mean, a lot of writers, because I know being a composer myself, yeah. uh, a lot of times you reach a certain point in your life, and you say, "Wow, these are some of the best songs I've written." Yeah. Those songs I really want to say for myself, and uh, so that I can get them out there, because there's only that's the only way I can portray them. Are you like that, or do you say, "I've got these songs. This is the whole stack. I'm going to let people hear them and try to get them out mm. there." Because there's two, mm -hmm. there's two different approaches about that. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not a production writer. It's not that I write a lot of songs and uh, you pick you pick a song out of my uh, library. That's not how I how I work. No, um, and the last song is always the best song. Uh, Almost, almost, almost always the best song, and um, there are a lot of songs I write now that that, that not that I won't let hear to people, mm -hmm. um, but the 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 songs in nowadays I write uh, are more mature, are more um, uh, uh, are real, more real. It's it's uh, also closer to yourself in a way. Well, back back to your whole thing. You, you know, you've you, of course you you you've matured over the years. Yeah. So you start going. You want to be a little bit more philosophical about what you're saying in your songs, probably. Is that what you want to say? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, uh, it's it's more like less is more. I wanna I wanna uh, explain uh, a story and my feelings, and not uh, uh, you production. Could, yeah, I like I like uh, saying I love you in in there. Uh, you can say I love you in very uh, um, different ways. Different ways, but yeah. um, it's not always the, the 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 most difficult way to say it. You can better say I love you. Uh, 
<laughs> it's hard to explain about songwriting, but uh, well, it's it's more you, the you're doing, you're doing you're doing fine, man. <laughs> all the pieces together, uh, the the pronunciation, I mean, mm-hmm. the uh, and how you sing it, um, and that that mix with the lyrics, with the melody, uh, in in this phase of my life, uh, it's another. Uh, it's a different wo- uh, sound when I was singing at my twentieth uh, age. Sure. Well, that that's that's logic. That's logical that's because logical. you're going to go, you're, because you're maturing. You get older. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I write out so <coughs> completely different than I did twenty five years ago. Yeah. And uh, each each all the songs have a certain phase uh, that I am in that particular point in my life. You know, I mean, I'm now almost sixty, and what? yeah. I'm almost 60. No way! And, and <laughs> my, my, my oldest son is just a couple of years younger than you. But over the years, when I was 25, I wrote differently than I did when I was 35. And yeah. 45, and now pushing. Well, so you, there's you, less, so, less ego. Well, you get less ego, yeah. and but your songs become richer because you know the fl- you you're so well in tune with yourself about the flavors that yeah. you want to put into the songs. Yeah, and I think that makes a difference as well. Maybe that's what you're trying to imply in your answer. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. The, the, those are the right words you, you're telling me. Yeah. Yeah. So I I can feel where you're coming from on that end. Yeah. Well, it gives me the the moment to uh, go to your latest single, your newest single. Yeah. Um, I showed it in the camera just uh, minutes ago. Uh, it's called Het Licht, translated The Light. The Light, yeah. Uh, it's all in your own hands, right? I mean, and it's not like you go out for a label and you no. get it all by yourself with a, with a great team of yeah. people. Um, it's, it's a single which, uh, you know, among uh, all your other singles, has a lot of success, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're playing in the Benelux area and uh, Germany. Can you tell us a bit more about how it came about and yeah. where it's right now? I will. Well, it's almost, it's now 14 years uh, ago. Um, the single is about my, my father who died okay. 14 years ago. And um, it's about him, it's about life, it's about death. Uh, it's about loss, and uh, I wanted to record. I wrote this song, well, let's say seven, eight years ago, and I want to. I want always wanted to record this song, and I want to hear everyone has to hear this. Had to hear this song. So uh, now in these days, I started my own label, Mood for Music, and with a group of fantastic people, uh, believers, and. Uh, we are building t- uh, a beautiful platform, but but that's that's the new uh, new way. But the single, I I I wanted to go to South France with my uh, team to to make it visual uh, mm-hmm. my uh, my connection with my father. Okay, y- uh, your father was from France. No, no. Okay. But we we uh, we went on vacation in 1999 okay. Okay. with the family, and I. Climb that mountain. I climbed the mountain in South France, Peak de Bouquerache, mm-hmm. in La Lac- That's Lac- on the picture, right? That's the on picture. the picture. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, Peak de Bouquerache, uh, 1200, 1300 uh, meters high. Wow. And um, I did that trip with him. Okay, and it wow. was special. And it was a father son thing. Yeah. And. <clears throat> um, I want to show that to everyone uh, what what my father meant to me and still mean, uh, means still to me. Is, yeah, yeah, and he is he's there somewhere, he's here. And I believe uh, I, I'm I'm not a religion a religion person like Catholic or whatever. Yeah, 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 I I'm more spiritual uh, mm-hmm. minded, mm-hmm. and I believe he is also a part of the writer in me. Mm. Okay. And I can feel it, but okay, that's my that's my belief. My uh, well, I mean that's 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 a beautiful thing, man. I mean it's it's always glad when you can carry a loved one uh, with you through your daily life, yeah. Dad. Because I I know how it feels. I lost my dad also some years ago, and uh, I was in the middle of a CD as well, and 
dedicated the CD eventually yeah. to him. So I, I understand that very well. That 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 those special moments that you have together. Yeah, yeah. You know, you you carry that and you and you relive them. And I, I personally think that also helps. Uh, let's say form the simplicity that you want to bring in your music later on in life. Yeah, he's the reason that I uh, went going. Uh, I go on with music. Yeah, I decided to 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 follow my heart and to bring music to people. He's the reason. Uh, at the day before he died, he was telling to me, "Ray, it doesn't matter what you do in life, as long as you follow your heart, as you do do what you like to do." <coughs> and wow. Well, uh, that really uh, shook me up, and uh, sure. um, yeah, it's a dedication to him, and uh, I hope many people uh, recognize. I think many people will recognize this, and I will. Uh, yeah, so I went to France, and there's a video clip. All right, and wow. and I I, I it's show on it your to website people. too, right? It's on video. my website. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had a release on the twenty second of uh, January. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, so uh, it's not it's not it, for me. It's a hit. It's a hit, but it it didn't turn out uh, to <laughs> a hit. But it doesn't matter at all because well, you know you know a, a hit is what you feel inside, man. I mean, yeah. that, let's let's face it. Uh, the industry has changed over the years. I yeah, mean, we've seen a whole development, and you're still a puritan as a writer. And I would say puritans always survive. So if it sounds good now, and you can put it on five or ten years later and it still sounds good to you, that's when it's a hit. Yeah. Yeah, your yeah. heart and soul is yeah. in it, right? And, and that's what it really is. Those are things that we, we yeah. talked about, right. you know, in the early, earlier podcasts. It's know. for me all about yeah. music and it's yeah. a way of life. Yeah. It's yeah. really that's a way it. of life. Absolutely. Well, listen, we got one more question before yeah. before we have to end our interview is, uh, and that is, um, we always ask our artists if they had a funny situation or, you know, been in an awkward position or something in their career mm -hmm. that they want to share with our with our audience. Have you had anything like? Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I had one. Uh, I have more. Yeah. Well, what was it again? One is enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um. <clears throat> yes. Well, one of the moments when I did the voice. Uh, uh, I really didn't know how it worked. So I went to the audition and I stood there and I looked into the uh, into the room to, and, and the people and they go, what is this all about? And <laughs> I stood there with my guitar and four, four chairs, I turned all turn around and I was playing and then and playing and singing and whoa, what the fuck? They are turning around, oh! Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know how it works. Yeah, how it yeah, worked. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's one. And and uh, well, there is there's a lot of more, but I can't remember right now. Uh, uh, funny stories, awkward things. Yeah, 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 yeah. The musical chairs program. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. Can, can I think? <laughs> oh man, uh, I don't know right now. I don't know right now, but. Well. That, that one, that's funny enough. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's funny enough for our insiders. <laughs> um, anyway, we want to we wanna thank you for being on our show today, Ray. Yeah, thanks. And uh, also my co-host, uh, Peter D. Hey, uh, if, you like, if you like to uh, find some information out about Ray, please go to our Page on our pages, and it's um, the Rhythm Factory Video Podcast at gmail.com. You can write us. You can also find us on Facebook at the Rhythm Factory uh, uh, Podcast, and all the information about Ray you can find also there. Uh, you can find information about us on there. You can write me or tweet me at, ja at Jazzo Music, and Peter is uh, at PB Department. All right. This is it for this particular podcast for today. And uh, we want to thank thank you once again, Ray, for uh, coming on the show and sharing your not only your musical experience, but your emotional experience. Yeah, well, through. thanks for having me it here. Was a, it was a nice, was a nice journey pleasure. with you, buddy. Yeah. All right, Absolutely. thank you very much. Right, thanks, you're welcome. This was the Rhythm Factory Podcast. My name is Eddie C, and we'll see you another time. And we'll leave you with these words. Remember. Music comes from the heart, 
comes from the emotion, but most of all from the memories. Take care.